comedian is somebody who took me under their wing when I first started out in comedy. He's putting his hands together for Scotty, you guys. He's not an Elvis Presley impersonator, although I'm sure he can make way more money doing that if he tried. Give it up for the funny Scotty Chee. The very hilarious, the very great Scotty Chee. Give it up for Scotty. Hello, guys. I am Scotty Chee. Actually, we're going to be in the new uh, Star Wars movie. We're going to be the characters Storm and the Capital Troopers. <laughs> Just kidding, we're going to be Chewbacca's gay nephews. <laughs> C-U-N-T. C-word. I lost. And I got suspended. Because the judge was a c You can go fuck yourself, Scott. Darth Vader machine. Fast forward to that time, and I get violently woken up by my wife screaming, The cat's fucking nothing! Go to bed! And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? What? My wife comes into the room angry. Right, now. right. My wife comes into the room angry, and I'm like, tell me what happened. She goes, I fucking catch this kid. I'm standing there for two minutes, and I'm watching her. And I'm like, ah, and I'm like, just tell me what happened. She's chasing the cat around for two minutes, and then she spots me. She goes, oh, TT, the cats. This is where we pick up. The cat's fucking nothing! I saw that and I go to bed! I just looked at my wife and said, well, I didn't see it, so... <laughs> oh my god! This happened oh. like four years ago. I didn't realize this was a great bit till yesterday. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. That's all we're hearing there. <laughs> I didn't realize we were recording. The guy, a good friend, Anthony Roan, Manny Gasset. Hey. Hey. It's not, it's not cheat time anymore, y'all. It's now called Made in God's Image. I, I think like it. I think cheat time's a little cheesy. I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it reminds me uh, like a Disney Channel podcast. Okay. It, that, but I also have to say, like, your one bit where you just close it with Made in God's Image. Mm -hmm. It's always made me pop so hard when you say it. <laughs> yeah, wearing like, the clown nose and the dauber glasses. <laughs> yeah, that dude, that bit was amazing. Uh, and, and I'm and I'm not and I'm not gonna lie, it really happened actually. And you know, obviously those glasses aren't real, of course. But I uh, but I did choose. Um, it's not the ones I got. Those are nice ones actually. But I did look for some, and they were kind of similar because my friend had gotten aviator glasses like that. I'm like, I kind of want to be like that too. Because you know, you know, I got a huge head. I got to make sure you know things yeah. can cover my my fucking my cranium. And so the lady went like this: "Oh, you look like a pedophile." And I'm like, "Really?" And she's just like, "I'm so sorry." And I'm like, "You're lucky. I'm I'm you know cool with uh, with jokes and stuff. But you know, if that was somebody else, <laughs> your ass probably would have been fucking fired a long time That's ago." So blunt. <laughs> and, yeah, she's, yeah, like because you know I made it very dramatic, but she was just like, "Oh, you." Look like a pedo, and I was like, oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah. She has so. the best, so much else you look like a pedo. Yeah, saying you have a big head, though, I mean, if, if you see me and Manny, this should be the well, Jughead we, boy. I mean, here's, yeah. here's, here's the difference. You actually find hats that fit. I can't. Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> my, my, my coworker has to print me a 3D printed extender just for it to go back here, and I still look like a kid wearing a hat way too small for him. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me look ooga booga. I was going to say, I look like ooga booga. booga, booga. <laughs> Like Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z with the big ass eyebrows. <laughs> Is Piccolo technically black? I think so. I, I yeah. guess, man. He's also technically like Gohan's dad because he's the one that raised him where Goku was off fucking off and uh -huh. training. I mean, well, they kind of already fucked up with what was his name, Mr. Popo. And yeah. He pretty much had blackface the whole time. Oh, dude, that was so blackface. <laughs> so they overcorrected with Piccolo and made him green. <laughs> the big painted on lips. Tar oh, black, <laughs> the one gold earring. No eyebrows. <laughs> no eyebrows. No. <laughs> green, green lives matter, guys. <laughs> he was the two pop of Dragon Ball Z. Let's be honest. Yeah. He was. <laughs> I I didn't get I didn't get into full on Dragon Ball Z, but I you know I I, I respect it. Always thought it was really cool. Well, you heard of the new series coming out, right? No. It's 2023. They're doing Dragon Ball LGBT now. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kamehameha. Vegeta has just always struck me as an overly masculine lesbian. Vegeta so. is going to be now called Vagina. Yeah. <laughs> it just cracks me up that all their names are vegetables. Yeah. Like in Japanese. Broly, really? broccoli. Kakarot is carrot. 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 Vegeta, vegetable. vegetable. I did not know that. Krillin is another vegetable. What if Vegeta was crippled? Vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> because they're always killing him. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's Goku named after, like? His real name's Kakarot, it's Carrot. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Come <laughs> on, what dude. The, where, does, where does Goku and Kakarot come from? Kakarot. Kakarot. Carrot cake. Yeah, but what, where, where, did, where, did you get the name? <laughs> where did you get the name Goku from? I, I bet if we Google it right now, it's going to be another vegetable. I'm on it. Oh, uh, what? Hey, Goku. I mean, vegetable. I'm trying to think of a vegetable. I mean, surprise people are going to be like, oh, these guys know what vegetables are. <laughs> you know? Ginger. Ginger. It starts with a G. Yeah. Oh, he might be right. Or grapes. Where does the coup come from in grapes? If he's like Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> <laughs> White powder. White powder. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this got a little more philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> I love when they get philosophical and like. Animes and shit. <laughs> this is really, really dark. The name Goku is boy's name of Japanese origin, meaning aware of emptiness. Let's face it, Goku's head is very what? empty. Well, you know, karaoke is uh, another word that stands for empty orchestra. No shit. They got some fucked up. It's karaoke. <laughs> so karaoke does sound like a Japanese name. Well, karaoke. The Japanese it, it, karaoke. Mm. Yeah, Japanese I, I don't know. I don't know look, that. I'm gonna look so ignorant now to the under. No, it's Japanese. It's Japanese. Karaoke, yeah. Okay. Nah, there'd be like a Kim in the name of Kim Yoki. Kim Yoki. Kim Yoki. Kim Yoki. Kim Yoki. So, how, how much can we get canceled in the first five minutes of a podcast? Stop Asian hate, guys. <laughs> this God, is Asian yeah. love. This is all it is. Yeah, what Asians. And it's actually really funny because when my girl's Camaro got stolen. Wait, you, what? Yeah. Oh, I, th- I never told you that story. You Buckle up, let's go. Alright. Story time. So this is how my 32nd birthday got fucking ruined by a stolen vehicle. That recent. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh it's just not so long. Shit. Back in January. January this year. Yep. Um, so, a, two years ago, me and my girl were working at the same bar. Mm-hmm. And she had a Camaro that was probably the blackest thing you've ever seen in your life. Well hung. Yeah, very well hung. Powerful. Low, low credit score? Oh, Horrible oh, credit score. I'm sorry. Horrible credit oh, score. Never saw his kids. <laughs> never saw his kids. Not one time. kids. Never saw them. <laughs> really big child support. Really, really good at basketball. Amazing at basketball. <laughs> and let me tell you, this thing was a fucking track star. <laughs> God, I'm so canceled. Anywho, it's... Story time. It's pitch black. One of her customers was drunk as shit. Big jacked up track went to go back out of the parking lot. Yeah. Fucking hit the front fender of it. Oh my god. Oh. So we're rolling around with this fucking just dented front filter fender for I don't know two years, and then he finally we finally get it all figured out. We take down the Maher Chevy in Clearwater, saying Pete, don't ever take a fucking vehicle there. And we get a call one day that the vehicle's ready. Well, she's at work. I'm at work. We can't go pick it up. And we were going to go down the next day before we both had to go to work. We're on our way down to Maher Chevy. Don't shop there. Maher, Maher, Maher. Maher. I want a Maher. She, I wanted she a, her Chevy. I wanted to Maher somebody after this happened. So uh-huh. we get called on the way down, and my girl is on the phone, and she is just fucking tears. What the fuck is going on? They call her to let her know that somebody stole her car from the shop. In the shop. Oh my god. That's like Ferris Bueller shit right there. Dude. Where they leave the car and the guy's just like, do you think I'm going to steal it? And then they fucking steal it. Ask me about stolen car when you're done. Best use of Star Wars music of all time, by the way. <laughs> but they're just going over the fucking the so, big ramp. This is like literally like two days before my birthday. Uh-huh. And we were going to blow it out for my birthday. We were going to go to... Uh, Whatever strip club is on my team in Clearwater. A lot of them. A lot of them. The Rusty Bucket. <laughs> it's the Rusty Trump Bell. 
and we were gonna meet up a lot of my friends at this bar, and my girl was in no mood to party. Mm, yeah. So. Well, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but what was supposed to be my night just turned into her crying to a bunch of people about her car getting stolen. <laughs> I'm like, this thing was fucking insured, and it was stolen from a dealership. You think it's not getting fucking replaced? So. I'm so sorry. She felt bad about it, and she's like, we're going to redo it tomorrow night. And I'm going to be present for it, and the whole thing. Long story short, I get the saddest lap dance of my life, because she's at a bar telling a bunch of strangers about how her car got stolen, and she starts crying there, too. <laughs> Make matters worse, I'm pretty sure like, <laughs> the girl that was giving me a lap dance literally just had to have like ACL surgery or something. Oh she was like, <laughs> she had like a full, full she, stabilizer range, she had like limited range she, of motion. She, she, she just yeah. shoots her roll up to you in the wheelchair and then fucking lift herself on. She's grabbing onto your neck trying to hold on like a like one of those monkeys with the Velcro and a spider monkey. After she gives you a lap dance, you're over there helping her with her exercises. All right, all right, yeah. come on. Yeah. All right, now, you, now you're changing your diaper. Yeah, now I'm changing your diaper. <laughs> I had to get that cat there and put back in. Oh man. Um, but yeah, so that's not a kickstand. No, not at all. <laughs> so we ended up getting a shit ton of money in insurance. Yeah. And we were coming back from the police station. Mm. The detective told us there was like six different stories that were told by the by our Chevy. And the actual story of what happened is is not only was Maher open when this fucking thing was stolen, the dude literally just walked right into the garage, grabbed the keys, hauled ass in it. Wow. Did he get the, anything on camera? I mean... No. How the fuck? What? How the fuck did they not record any of this? If it's at a dealership? What dealership was it? Maher Chevy. Maher! Maher, Maher! Maher! So, uh... <laughs> she, her, Maher. <laughs> to make matters worse, we actually got to see where the uh, vehicle was fixed at, and it looked really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then he took the other side of the front of the car and peeled that son of a bitch like a tuna can from front to fucking back as oh he hit one of those big cement light poles down in St. Pete. Yeah. Oh. The dude was smoking meth in there, smoking oh cigarettes, putting the cigarettes out on these custom. My girl had this car custom made. It had Oreo seats, white leather with black leather on the sides. Mm. I smoke cigarettes. I never smoked a cigarette in that fucking car a day in my life. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you don't. No, no, you don't. no, no, yeah. not, not that. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes are an outside thing. Yeah. So they told us it was open when the car was stolen. The guy just walked in, grabbed the key, went outside, got it. They were thinking it's an inside job, but they couldn't fucking prove anything. It's this whole mess. We're still dealing with the fucking lawsuit. But, uh,. I told you that I had to tell you a story about Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did this go from that to Dragon Ball Z? Well, Dragon Ball Z and that to back to Dragon Ball Z. Come was, back. We were coming back from the police station. In fun fact, right by the St. Pete police station, it's like right next to Tribe Camp Field. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and when we parked to walk to the police station, on our way back to the car, this business was opened up. I didn't know what the fuck it was. This was before I work where I work now. And it was like, dad bar. And I was like, dad bar? I'm not sure what this is all about. Go inside, you pay this guy five bucks. Set you up a dad break. Oh, I like where this is going. I did not. <laughs> I got super big. Oh, dab bar. I thought you said dad bar. No, dad. I was like, what you, I was like dad bar. I'm like, well, you have to be a dad to go there or something? Mm -hmm. no. Sounds kind of gay. You gotta wear my shirt. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're heading back. I am higher than draft pussy. And my girl's yeah, phone just starts blowing up with emails. Yeah. And it's her bank, and it's a bunch of fraud shit. Oh, shit. And they're like, hey, you just had $40,000 deposited into your bank account. Wait, wait, into? Yeah. Into. It was a deposit from the insurance. Oh, okay. And in a moment of weakness, we were hood rich for about five hours. <laughs> and we decided we were going to stop at Countryside Mall and go get new sneakers. Oh, my God. that's what you do. And the manager of the champs we went to, her name was Akira. 
she was named after the creator of Dragon Ball. Full circle. We 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 can we we want to <laughs> orbit around. <laughs> okay. here, man. It's awesome. So you see, you, you, you said you have a, a stolen car story too, bro. Yeah, it's, it's not just stealing down my as crazy as that. <laughs> I mean, it might. I don't know, dude. So I'm excited. It is in Miami. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was born and raised in Miami. At 15, I moved to Tampa. Okay. Been here ever since. But while I was in that shithole paradise, <laughs> one point my dad had a it was like a green BMW or a, a Mercedes SUV, right? And he had a very close friend who owned a repair shop, so he took it over to him for him to repair and all this stuff. But he kept telling him, yeah, you know, Mercedes are complicated, we have to read, you, you know, you got to take the whole thing apart just to take, just change one thing. Right now your car is just, you know, the, the engine's not even in it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I get detention at school one day. And I have to stay late, because duh, detention. But when I get picked up, my, my dad's driving, my mom's in the front seat, I'm in the back, I look at the car in front of us. Dad, that's your car. No, it's not. I'm like, no, no, no. That's your car. That is your car. You have that scratch on the bottom right, and that on the bumper, and that's your license plate number. He's like, how do you know that? Because I'm autistic. I mean, that's not what I told them, but I know these stupid things, right? <laughs> I just know these things. So I knew his license plate number. My dad. I'm so sorry. Engages <laughs> in a high speed pursuit on this vehicle. Just put Motley Crue in the background. And we're fucking driving. <laughs> Might as well. Get my heart! Let me steal my car! <laughs> so we're chasing this lady oh, I, I through the neighborhoods. I got Blas Scotty, she was Go. just driving a fucking right steer vehicle when he was doing that. <laughs> Shit with the just fucked up that clutch, homie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, my bad. <laughs> okay, how about we're in England? Find a gear, find a gear. Ah! <laughs> I drive, I drive an automatic. Passenger driver over here. <laughs> you also break on the invisible brakes. <laughs> the, we're in the invisible boat mobile, all right? Uh, hey. Hey, sort the invisible boat along. Fun okay. fact: I had to clean that on the SpongeBob. Uh, oh, the washer 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 washer? Have, yeah. Anyway, so. We're chasing this lady through neighborhoods in Miami, like chasing her at high speed, like going like 50 to 55. Oh, it's like a woman who stole the car. Yeah, that bitch. Until, That's right. like, she's calling the cops, we're calling the cops, the cops are calling the cops. People are just calling the cops at this point, right? We see a fucking school cop who stops us, and they, the lady gets out, and my dad gets out, and all I hear is, blah, 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 blah. so I started paying attention. And she's going, this crazy man is chasing me for no reason, blah, blah, blah. And my dad screams, this bitch stole my fucking car. At that point, we figured out she had taken her car to get repaired at the same place that my dad had taken his car. And the dude gave my dad's car out as a floater. There was nothing wrong with it. He lied about it, and he was still going to try and charge my dad like three grand or something for repairs and never happened. That's bad shit. Holy Fast shit. Fast forward three months later, the shop shut down. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Lawsuit happened. Holy shit. All this sorts of shit. Yeah. Dude, man. that's fucking wild right there. It was ridiculous. And I was still grounded for having detention. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fucking the grand, nature of the whole thing. In the grand scheme of like, things, dude, I feel like the detention should have taken a back seat. You're welcome for getting in trouble so that I can spot your car much later than we were even supposed to be in that part of town. But no, I still got grounded for having detention. Detention touch. Speaking of detention, you know, my school never had detention. We had ISS. Uh, did you guys? Yeah. Did you have detention in your school? Because you, 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 you grew up in this area, right? No, I grew up in Pennsylvania. We had. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We had detentions, ISS, and OSS. Yeah, we had ISS, OSS. Yeah, we didn't have detention. And we I, had ATOS. So what's that? Alternative to out of school suspension. Uh -huh. what, what is it? You go to a different place and sit with a bunch of criminal shitheads. Oh yeah, no, our school had uh, it too, yeah, but I don't other schools. I never got like, enough. It's always like it's always yeah. like the community park closest to where you live. I had ISS like once for like maybe a day, and it, I think it's because I, I I can't really remember. I, I must have been uh, mm. oh, I was late a couple of times, but I I, uh, I didn't do anything like too dramatic. I mean, I did stuff that that were pretty funny, but we never got caught. I think one of the funniest things we 
what my buddies did. We used to do what's called shit plants, where we would go. Uh, so there's a bathroom by the gymnasium at my school, and we would go and grab like a like a big like bush from uh, yeah, like a little shrub from the um, from the school, and go into the bathroom and put a put it in the toilets, and we call it the shit plants. Oh, my and then it's that. funny, my buddy. My, my buddy actually sent me a, um, a video of reels of kids doing it at, at, like now in, in one of the schools. And he's like, dude, they're carrying on our fucking legacy. This was fixed 15 years ago, too. <laughs> so, this, this might come as a shock to you guys, but I was a regular when it came to detentions, ISS. Oh, ISS. I bet you were. No. Uh, really? I yeah, bet yeah. you fucking were. What? I'm, I'm so shocked. I could not get away with anything to save my life. In high school, you're the, yeah, you're you're definitely the one. Like it was like an MTV show. Say that's Anthony. Right. He's yeah, a he's wait. a bad boy. It wasn't wait. a bad boy. It was just the dumbest shit in the world. Yeah. Like, because I just hated fucking school. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then my senior year of high school, I get hurt, and then I get hooked on pills because I get hurt. Yeah. And the only that's time right. I got away with anything in my entire life, and I kind of wish I would have gotten caught because it would have forced me to get sober sooner. <laughs> Was I was crushing up a Percocet on the back of the urinal. I know. It's fucking filthy. Listen, man, when you're an addict, you gotta get your fucking fix. Yeah. I, I completely understand. Yeah, yeah. I'm using my GameStop powered up rewards. <laughs> on his way to get a Dragon Ball Z game. Booty guy take Kaiichi too. And I'm crushing up this fucking Percocet. And I, I, the dude's name's Kyle. From Saturday Night Live. Yeah. The dude with the long hair and the glasses. Yeah, yeah. This substitute teacher looked fucking identical to him. Ironically enough, there was another kid named Kyle standing next to me. Fucking Kyle's. That was waiting for me to finish crushing up the pill because I was going to split it with him. And uh, he walks <laughs> in. And the second he walks in, Kyle goes and runs into the stall. And I just instinctually pull my dick out and act like I'm pissing. <laughs> and this yeah. fucking substitute this, teacher this goes. The substitute teacher goes. Leave before I decided to find out what you were doing. And I was like, okay. Yes, sir. Go to walk out. Five seconds later, walk back in because I left my GameStop Power Up Rewards card on the back of the urinal. Pushed down, scooped all the power into the fucking toilet and left. Oh, no. So that's yes, the only time yeah. I didn't get in trouble that I wish I would have because I would have cleaned my shit up so much sooner. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I was more like, uh. Let's be honest. I, 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 I talk shit. To te- like I had teachers that were like pretty cool that would like fuck with me back if like if I had like a disagreement and I'd be like you're an idiot they're like why am I an idiot there Scott and then I I don't know just be like I don't know you just don't explain it very well and they're like well you want to explain to the class and I'm like not really and they're like then sit the fuck down and shut up and I'm like yeah that's basically me I didn't I didn't like do many like you know pranks I got high outside of school. Oh, I fought outside. Of, I fought outside. I fought outside of school. I, I, so you never dropped acid and gone to class. No, I mean I got I got high <laughs> a couple times, but I never dropped acid and went to class. Acid? I wish I did. So here's the thing: I've never dropped enough acid to actually get the crazy dragons and hallucinations yeah. that people did. Yeah. But anytime I did drop acid, it was like Inception. Like the walls were like moving up and down a little That's bit. Dope. Doors would breathe. That's fucking cool. Man. Yeah, it was cool. That so awesome. I would go to school like that, you know. Like, <laughs> so, but the, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was the weird part for me was like, high school was miserable for me because like I wasn't cool in high school. I didn't have many friends. Yeah, like, I mean, it, hello, it, we're it, comedians. Yeah, I, I still, yeah. I still find it hard to make friends now, even though my girlfriend's like, why is everybody like you? And uh-huh. I was like, I have resting dick face, so people stay the fuck away from me, and they just don't <laughs> pick up the hint. But you're the fucking nicest guy ever. I am, but it's like, because all my relationships always end up ending horribly. Like, my best friends, I'm like, Sarah, my brother, who was literally there at the hospital when my daughter was born, Uh was banging my baby mama. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Like, relationships with me just don't fucking work. So that's why, you know, I'm very selective of who I like. Anthony, I promise you, I'll never bang your baby mama. That's... It's probably not hard to at this point, from what I understand. Manny, don't look at me. I'm married. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I'm technically married too, bro. So I mean, I'm fine banging anybody. Yeah, I'm basically married at this point too. Yeah. I mean, but, I'm not saying she won't go in the spank bank, but I won't fucking bang her. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, where the fuck was I going with that story? Uh, you're talking about friends and. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm friends at school. So I was. Pushing you got covered earlier. Yeah, I wasn't really cool in high school, but like I was all. I tried to be like a good boy. Yeah. Which was weird always getting like in school suspension detention yeah. and shit 
because I didn't smoke weed until I was 16. Yeah. Mm. And even then, I was like, I'm never doing that again because I had an entire pumpkin pie with ketchup on it. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> what? Ew. <Dude. laughs> we were off school for Thanksgiving break. I was at my boy Mikey's house. His parents were getting ready to go through a divorce, so he got to stay home alone all the time. And they had an extra pumpkin pie in the fridge that we were allowed to eat. And I got kind of goaded into smoking weed. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the fuck. I just remember being, like, super hungry, and I was, like, putting sauces on food, and I was like, what can I fucking whip up to make this pumpkin pie different? <laughs> so I, I thought I was bad for going to fucking Subway and getting a squirt of every sauce in my sandwich. Yeah. It literally earned me the nickname Manny Sauce in high school. Manny sauce. Manny sauce. Manny sauce, I like it. Yeah. Well, something a porn star. What's up? <laughs> Manny sauce is out here slinging yeah. yogurt. Go yeah. with the but, sauce. But it's, it's funny that you mentioned, like, you know, like being, being a comedian now because, you know, well, obviously back then, like, you know, I, I wasn't popular either. If you were popular back in high school and you were a comic, I don't know. To me, I don't know what to call it. It's just, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, because I mean, yeah. Yeah, lucky. I mean, like, I was friends. I had friends. I had, you know, I played sports. I, I like, had, like, friends in all different, like, yeah. sets of, like, you know, little cliques. Like, I, I had friends with, like, some of the preps. So, friends with, like, you know, a lot of jocks. I played baseball and football. You know, I was even friends with, like, the metalheads because I'm a huge metalhead. Right, I, I, knew, I knew some of the goths as well. Kind of like, kind of like and, and, and then, like, and then, like, the, and, like, the black and Hispanic kids as well, too. They, they, all, they all hung out. I was friends with a lot of them as well, too. So, yeah, I, I try to be, like, you know, cool with everybody. But I wasn't, like, you know, look at me, this and that. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was, I was there. So I think about I've been thinking about like that a lot recently, yeah. like why I was such weirdo in high school, right? Oh. And this is something I've been thinking about just personally. That yeah. so like I always thought people hated me. I always thought that I me didn't too. have many friends or whatever. Yeah, but then too. I think back about it, like no, I was like a chameleon. I would blend into whatever group I wanted to blend into at the time. Shit, that's like me right and right I now. just knew that I didn't like bad times. I just didn't yeah. like just not being happy. Yeah. Because I was young, I was depressed, I just wanted to fucking feel something that wasn't I, misery. Well, kids want, you know, to yeah, be yeah. part of something, it's kind of, yeah, it's like... So I would find, like, all these groups, and I would, like, okay, there's drama in this group, I'm going to leave. Okay, there's drama in this group, I'm going to leave. Yeah. Okay, okay there's drama yeah. in this group, I'm going to leave for a little bit. And, and so I, in yeah. my own head, yeah. told myself, I have no friends. Yeah. yeah. I was my biggest problem. It was my perspective and my mentality at the time, thinking, I have no friends, but really, it was just, I was avoiding when the good times didn't come. Hey, so in, in all honesty, I felt like a bad friend for that. It's kind of like now, too, man, because, I mean, like, you know, we'll see a lot of drama happening, you know, in our little comedy scene. We're like, we don't want to be part of this shit. I'm switching. Like, like, come on. I don't want to get involved. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you are Johnny Drop. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny because I remember in high school because I did play sports, but I also had like other options that I wanted to do. And I've talked about this with other people on my pod before too. And I can talk about it again because you know, I, because I was a I loved acting. I was a big theater kid as well. I did it before oh, high shit. school. Yeah, oh, I love acting. Um, and then, you know, I play sports, you know, baseball is one of my favorite things. And I also did martial arts. I was, a, you know, I did a lot of Tang Soo And so my parents were like, all right, man, we're in Bush's recession. <laughs> you know, you got big, you got big one, and that's it. So I was going to high school, so I'm like, all right. I nailed it down to, you know, obviously the last three. I'm like, what can make me money? So I chose, you know, either theater or baseball because I'm like, yeah, I can either become an actor or I can become a baseball player. And I drop out martial arts. I wish I fucking didn't drop out any of them. Actually, well, not eventually I did. So then I was like, all right, what's one that's gonna get me more pussy? <laughs> so then I'm like, people are gonna think I'm gay if I'm in theater. <laughs> and you know, I figured baseball players they get a lot of pussy. So I chose baseball. You want to know something, guys? I lost my virginity after high school. And I played baseball up until junior year until I got hurt. I went the opposite route. Yeah. I was in chess club. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. So I, I played football and shit. Yeah. I thought that was going to be like my key to like... Make it, making it. Yeah. Making it like... Mm -hmm. A, making my dad happy. Yeah. And B, making friends. And clearly that just didn't fucking work whatsoever. <laughs> I lost my virginity when I was 17. Yeah. And I actually did really well on that one. So pat myself on the back. Nice. But it led to just like a whole bunch of unnecessary drama. Was it with like a 30 year old woman at the time or something? So it was a girl, she was one of the hottest girls in our school. <laughs> okay. And I still to this day do not pulled it off. 
<laughs> but I remember the next day sitting at a fucking red light. And here's how... He's like, like oh, wait, where these quaaludes come from? <laughs> here's how fucking lame I was. I showed up to lose my virginity in my black practice jersey. Because before the season started, they just give you these practice jerseys. Yeah. And every year before the season started, during the season, I was number 60. When we had our practice jerseys, I always got number 69. <laughs> I show up and I remember back in the day the flat, the flex yeah, fit, yeah, uh, yeah. flat build oh, tap yeah, out hats. Yeah, oh hell God. yeah. I was wearing one of those Good and time. a pair of gym one shorts. Of the fucking Ed Hardy gym shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and I just showed up. I we went to go have sex. I pulled my shorts down to my ankles. Did not take off the practice jersey. It's fucked up jersey. I like a three year old peeing at the yes. urinal. <laughs> Butters <laughs> and then, uh, well, hey, fellers. <laughs> it was crazy because I'll never forget. She started blowing me, nice. and just like this warm beam of light just hit me in the fucking face. Like, God, like, hey, I want to rethink your decisions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and I turned and looked to see where the light was coming from. And it was her laptop, and it was her screensaver. And it was just a bunch of pictures scrolling through of her and some dude. Oh man, and I'm like, hey, who's that? And with the quickness and with as much of my dick as she can... While you're fucking her? No, she's blowing me. Oh, oh she's blowing me. Okay, okay. And with the quickness and with as much of the three inches that she can keep in her mouth while going to the computer, slams the computer shut and then just jumps on my dick. Oh. So we're not talking about that, apparently. Not, not talking about it unless she's hot and I shouldn't be in this situation. I'm losing my virginity. And I lose track of time. When you're under 18, you have a curfew, you can't be out past midnight. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and I have 22 missed calls from my mom. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And I, <laughs> I had to make up a lie. It was probably something stupid. But I'll never get the next day, go pick up my cousins, we're riding around town. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Josh is behind me in his truck. And I lean my head out of my truck, and I go, I fucked so-and-so last night. Ah. Like, I was feeling like the fucking man. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, not 20 minutes goes by, we're back to the house. High as shit. We're <laughs> dipping Burger King cheeseburgers and brownie batter. Oh, God, I want to barf. So, Dude, the shit you eat when you're stoned. Yeah, I just nah, put cheese on That's why I quit smoking. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I quit smoking. You and need to learn to like cheese, bro. <laughs> I, get a, I get a phone call from a block number. And I answer it. And there's this dude, and he sounds very stern. He goes, hey, did you hook up with so-and-so last night? And I was like, yeah? He goes, well, I'm so-and-so's fiance. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sorry, man. Hung up the phone. Five minutes later, she texts me. I can't believe you told him that you're never going to see me again. And I was like, I got my answer. Like, why should he be mad at you when he should be mad at his fiance? Wait, fiance? She was in high school and he had a, she had a, he had a fiance? She was held oh, back here. She was 19. Oh. Don't judge. So, technically, I mean, even though in the state of Pennsylvania you can have sex with 16 and up if you're within a certain age. Yeah, it's 16 to 24 yeah. with, and with the, if you have consent. Still a bit of a pedophile. Still, yeah, that's pretty pedophilic. I, I was kind of taken advantage of. Yeah. There's that one comedian that's like... <laughs> There's a difference between a like a pedophile and something else. Yeah. Like if you like an age group of like 14 to 18, it's technically called a pedophile. But you can't explain that without sounding like, like a, a pedophile. Yeah, well, it wasn't that. Wasn't that <laughs> Mark, who it was was it was Mark Norman who said think, that? I'm not sure. I don't want to misquote. Yeah, but no, I, yeah, I, I've heard that sound, before. Yeah, yeah, it's That's one hilarious. of those clips you see online. It's just it's so yeah. perfect. So what about you? What, what was your virginity? Uh, <laughs> when, did, when did it go by, by? So like alcohol, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21. Okay. I drank alcohol a lot earlier. I married her. Still married oh. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just, I was very weird about it. Like, so I went to Christian school most of my life, which is very confusing because I grew up in a Santeria <clears throat> family. Mm -hmm. So like, it's very weird to like pluck off the head of a chicken and then go to Christianity or Christian school. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, dark, right? But that's what I grew up in. I didn't know any better. Um, so I would go to Christian school and they would basically, whenever they have sex ed, it's always the worst thing that can happen from having sex. Yeah. Shit that I've never even heard. Like, 
You know how as a kid you're worried about quicksand because it's always in Looney Tunes because yeah. you grow up and it never <laughs> yeah. happens? It's yeah. the same thing with sex education at a Christian school. Yeah. It's stuff that you never fucking see and you've never come across and you've maybe heard of it from a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy that that happened to, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just scared of sex. Just scared of it. They didn't want to do it. They didn't even bother. Mm -hmm. Then I got to high school and I like getting high more. And you know, I had a couple girlfriends here and there, but it was mostly just like, yeah, you know, I fucking I like you, you're pretty, let's yeah. go out. I'm too scared of sex. And then <laughs> that always fucking was like, deal breaker. Yeah, no some didn't I mean, care, but like, I was also very weird, so I, they, <laughs> they were not gonna last. Long. I have, I, yeah, I didn't, I refused to date in high school because of, uh, I had so many friends that had girlfriends, uh -huh. but they were miserable. Yeah. Like, we'd be playing Madden or whatever the fuck, and they'd be on the little, like, shh. Texting text their, text their, text their fucking girlfriends and they're like so pissed off they're like fucking Brittany like we dated for two weeks and like she's, she wants counseling and shit and I'm just like this is why I'd rather just play video games and not worry about dating until yeah. after high school you know because I, I don't work like what, what am I going to do like fucking have my mom and dad take take us to go to fucking Chuck E. Cheese or something it's like I knew yeah, like no. my mentality of high school was like I'm not going to get this back once it's gone yeah. I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is yeah you know, and then college came around, and I was like, well, I fucking kind of hate this shit. <laughs> so, like, after two years, I just worked. I was like, fuck this, I don't want to do this anymore, and I just worked. So, my virginity story, the way I lost it, the story gets way worse. Oh, yeah, Ooh, fucking boy, Come on, let's go. go. Let's go. It's all good, man. On, she, well, sends me a pic she sends me a picture of her ass and says, kiss my ass goodbye, this is the last time you guys see it. Was there an asshole, or just an ass? ass, yeah, just ass. ass. Oh, it would be really funny if it was, like, her is asshole. It like, it's like, like starfish? <laughs> Believe it, you know what's The yellow clad stinky star. Then, uh, <laughs> then she uh, sends me a video of her pleasing herself, and she was like, I bet you wish you could do this again. Da, da, da. And it eventually led to her asking me to come over and bang her one last time. Yeah, dumb. You get so, a good dick? There you go. No, my dick is fucking pathetic. I, <laughs> Why would she be still doing that? It was like, Because oh, it's, you know, it's a miracle I still get laid to this day. <laughs> and then, uh, it's because you're not married. I went over. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I went over and I thought this was a fucking trap. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I didn't wear a condom and I cream by the shit out of her. Nice. <laughs> okay. Fast forward five, six years, I'm living in Florida. Uh -huh. I go up to Pennsylvania for Easter. My mom's part of the American Legion because what else do you do in a white trash redneck town when there ain't shit to do? You join the American Legion. Right. And they do stand up there. <laughs> now we do stand up there. So I have two Cuban to be invited. <laughs> I'm standing in a circle of all my friends from high school. Yeah. The few I had. Yeah. And again, warm sensation. You know when somebody's staring at you and yeah. you just fucking feel it? Oh yeah. Yeah. My back yeah. is on fucking fire in the middle of April when it's fucking freezing in Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm like, something's not right here. Something I'm in is not right. <laughs> I turn around. They're staying so and so with about a six, seven year old kid on her hip. Is it yours? I turn back around. All my friends have fucking disappeared like Kaiser Soze. Like they threw one of those ninja smoke bombs and they all fucking vanished. And she makes a fucking beeline right towards me. And I'm like, I'm in danger. She's like, So you just ditch out of Pennsylvania, move to Florida, don't talk to nobody anymore. I'm like, oh fuck, she's gonna tell me this is my kid. Like, <laughs> there's no way the way this conversation is going, she's not gonna tell me that this is my kid. That's like hilarious. The, this is where I think we're heading. But time adds up. Time adds up. Long story short, she stayed with her fiance after found out that she was banging me. Mm -hmm. And it was his kid. Are you sure about that? This kid looks nothing like me. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you, Maury would see the pictures and refuse the money to do the oh my God. We're not even going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> they continue. I'm listening. I got to change so, the laundry. I got okay. so lucky with that situation. And while we're on this topic, I want to ask you a question. You brought up SpongeBob earlier. I love SpongeBob. Does anybody else feel like they, they could bang Ariana Grande now? I mean, Pete Davidson can. I think we all can. <laughs> She's dating the guy who played SpongeBob in SpongeBob the Musical. Wait, what's he look like? Okay. The, the, dude, he gives everybody fucking hope. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let me really let, let me do this. I want to look him up. He looks so really fucking dorky. dorky. He's really dorky. And now I think. I mean, you have to. Be, but 
Yeah. It's much rather yeah. than a fucking musical. But I think now, like, I probably have significantly better odds to bang Ariana Grande. Yeah, I'm really not. not. <laughs> but I think the funniest part about that was, though, Tom Kenny's wife had come out, and she released a statement. She goes, Hey, when they're one saying that Ariana Grande is dating SpongeBob, it's not my husband. Okay. It's the guy who played him in the musical. Gotcha. We're happy. We're in love. I don't even think he knows who Ariana Grande <laughs> is. Because when I first heard it, I was like, damn, Tom Kenny's banging fucking Ariana Grande. Right, that's what I thought too. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> yeah. So. Ah! 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 Patrick! Play <laughs> SpongeBob. Play SpongeBob! I can't, I can't do it anymore. Ah! Sounds you, like oh, SpongeBob! <laughs> Your neighbors are gonna think we're watching Meat King and SpongeBob. Oh my god! <laughs> you guys know about that? I love that what shit. Is so deprived. Did you see the one he did about Tom Brady after the Super Bowl? Yeah, dude, <laughs> they're all just so delightfully disturbing. Yeah, each I, and every one. I can't look away. And then the one he did of the ukulele girl's apology. <laughs> The Bugs Bunny's nipples are like fucking burnt. In the are you talking brain. about the fucking Wabbit season one? Yeah. You got a tiny little man pussy on you there. Tiny little man pussy on you there, don't you, boy? It's weapon season. Oh, Fucking weekend. Shout out to that new brain. Got time to be in the old body trail. <laughs> Dude, it's so. Like you said, the life leader brain. Dude, I'm so glad that guy has an outlet because we don't need another serial killer in this country. Okay, yeah. so, it's, so he played SpongeBob in the musical? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, look him up. I'm telling you, you're gonna be fucking shocked. He's a super dork, super dork, super oh, dork. He's so white, tall, and thin that Hulk Hogan would have tried to sniff him in the '80s. <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, Coke's a crazy drug. I did that for one time for three years. No comment. <laughs> this guy. Well, he's kind of built. Is he built? Yeah, kind of. A little bit. A little bit. Huh. I mean, at least gives me hope. She has a thing for gingers, I guess. He looks like a much dorkier Tom Holland. I didn't know that's what yeah. he wore as Spongebob on stage. Yeah. Does he, like, sound like an idiot? Is he just I've like, Ah, oh, Patrick! I've never heard him talk or anything like that, but I think it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. This is a different one. That's not him. That's not him. It's the ginger one. Okay. Definitely not him. That's Bob, not SpongeBob. <laughs> Sp Sp Sponge Bob. Robert. <laughs> SpongeBob grows up, gets a job. You guys ever seen the SpongeBob anime? On YouTube? I've seen, I've seen SpongeNob. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Stop what you're doing. Go watch SpongeBob. Come back. And I will never talk about it after. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I, I, I've seen SpongeNob. Why does that sound like a porn? It is a porn. It is. Uh, yeah, of course it is. Nah, it's is like, he spreading those sandy cheeks? Yeah, his fucking penis is like yellow. They, they, they like painted the porn star. Like he's basically in a big like brick, and, and Sandy's literally like sucking him right through her helmet. It's the funniest shit ever. And he's just like, oh, Sandy, Sandy. <laughs> Your neighbors fucking hate us. They hate it. <laughs> what would a sponge even ejaculate? Don soap. Soap. This soap. This soap. Yeah. This soap. Soap oh, scum. Yeah. <laughs> Or soap scrub. Uh, I have the suds. <laughs> I have the suds. Uh, like how they start washing. <laughs> He's fucking nuts and it's just. <laughs> 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 That was, that was a very good impression of bubbles. Right <laughs> it really <there>. was. <laughs> was Listen, if comedy doesn't work out, you get sound overwork. <laughs> the you, funny thing is, like, get paid shit here's the funny thing. Two weeks ago, I saw someone do that on YouTube, and I just went, oh, I can do that, whatever, right? So my niece is like, how do you do that? And I, I told her, well, you know, you just do that, and then you slowly push your tongue forward. She goes, mm. <laughs> I'm like, when have you ever seen me do this? You're such a freak. I've never done that. <laughs> I can do that, yeah. <laughs> hey, you're the uh, beginning of a TikTok sound. Seriously? Hey, let's talk about TikTok, yeah, man. So, I'm sure you're aware that Anthony and I used to be pretty uh, well known on TikTok, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Sore subject, right? Yeah, it's a weird subject. <laughs> yeah, so, so, Not so, so, much now. so, what got you banned? All right. I, I, I can't really remember. Like, so, what, at the time, what did? at the time, I was in my like real big men's mental health advocacy. I remember that video. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, it was a very intense video. Yeah, After yeah. I met you, I went digging. I found your videos. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're oh, getting fucking yeah, yeah, dude, I'm still getting fucking tagged in that one video to this day. And that was literally 
God, this is going to sound horrible to say out loud. Uh, earmuffs, kids. I've just finished going on a three-day bender because I lost custody. Not custody, mm -hmm. but they handed me my child support verdict, and they refused to set up a custody for me to have any rights with my daughter. Jesus. And I was just in my feelings. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to just talk about it, get it off my chest. Yeah. And sure as shit, dude, that video fucking blew up again. Yeah. And it's always such a weird feeling when a video where you're saying something that you really mean goes viral. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I start getting asked on all these podcasts and do discussions on panels about mental health awareness. And during that period, I started being a little bit more upfront with the shit I was going through. And I was helping with like, when the Afghan pullout happened, I was, I was doing a lot of work with like soldiers who were like just like when that happened a lot of our military members were in such like a horrible spot because they felt like you know everything they did over there was for fucking nothing right. and they're literally watching no plan people getting pulled out billions upon billions of dollars of equipment left behind being left behind and sold off and people who helped them who were citizens of Afghanistan were just getting fucking beheaded in droves let's go Brandon yeah like it was fucking insane like to just see the mental breakdown on these people and like trying to talk them yeah. off the edge and i found doing that was a lot better for me than going to therapy yeah just talking about it my therapist he was cool but he looked at me one day and this is how i knew therapy was bullshit he goes do you smoke weed this is completely off the record i was like sometimes he was like you need to do it more and i'm like why and he's like you're a threat to public safety when you're sober He's like, I'm just realizing this listening to you. Good what lord. A, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? He's like, you're a threat to public safety. You might, you might want to start fucking smoking. You're a menace to man. society, so we need weed to be a menace to your sobriety. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, so like, when he meant like you're a menace to society, like, would you like, I mean, like, no disrespect, would you like go and like find the first person you see and beat the shit out of them or something? So, like, like, I, right way? While I agree with the statement that marijuana can help yeah, with, of course. with like, PTSD and trauma, things course, like that, yeah. that is still fucked up thing. I, I have yeah, exactly. I, I have severe <laughs> anger management issues. Right. And if you push me to a point, uh -huh. I, I, there's no fucking off button. Yeah. Like, perfect example, during like right when we got lockdowns, a lot of bars had to enforce like masks and shit in the bars and they had like lower fucking attendance counts and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was making a shit ton of money doing side work as a COVID security for bars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was doing the one thing I hate more than anything, but I had to be the person Where? enforcing the mask and the space and shit. And I'll never forget this one kid came in and he had a total fucking meltdown. And it was a mental break. Like I, I recognize it because I'm somebody who's had those. Right. If he spotted he got it. And he elbowed Kelly. Oh. And called the bartender who was a front of mine a bitch. Mm-hmm. And when that happened, everyone just saw a fucking switch go off, and like six people grabbed a hold of me and dragged me to the fucking bar and locked the door. And I am still literally sitting there, like you know those push doors they have the metal rods? They're like Bruce the shark when he smells blood, and they're like, Intervention! Just a bite! I'm standing there like a fucking psychopath, pushing on the fucking metal bar, oh, wait, because he's trying to break the glass out. Jesus Christ. And my plan was I was going to grab a hold of his head and just fucking brains throw it down a glass and fucking finish the day. Nice. Like, that's where my brain goes when, like, I reach that point in our turn. Yeah, I just get quiet. No, I get quiet too, but, like, <laughs> it's, like, serial killer quiet. Uh-huh. So, back to TikTok. Yeah. Another circle. Yeah. Oh. It all ties in. Yeah, all clocks are circles. Yeah, this is fucking... Welcome to the ADHD pod. Um, <laughs> yeah, no shit. Autistic dudes that have diabetes. <laughs> hey, I'm not diabetic. I'm not diabetic either. <laughs> I was only borderline. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I took that from Drew Ferrano. I love that guy. He, he made a joke about that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I like Drew. I love that guy. So That's during good. all this, and this is where my new belief in politics came in, that all politicians are cunts. Yeah, I, I um, agree. Yeah. It's always been the case. It's always been yeah. the case. There was these shit. super hard Trump dick suckers that were all in the same fucking hive on TikTok. Yeah. And somehow they never got fucking banned for what they said. Yeah, echo chambers are a motherfucker. But they started doing this uh, weird thing where they just started doxing people for the sake of doxing people. 
Yeah, they love to do that on TikTok. And oh, the Pepe Trolls. Remember mm-hmm. those guys? Yeah. The little green frog? Yeah. And fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the it thing just is, surprised me that the green frog became like a symbol of Trump in the future. I, I also want to say, yeah, this I, is I racist understand that. I, like, yeah. yeah. I've never done yeah, this and been like, Zig Heil. Like, it just doesn't. Cause cause yeah, like, people, people thought this was white power. I'm like, no, it's a circle game yeah. with the fucking itchy. Or, yeah. or okay. ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> But, uh,. Of course I can. So I made a video calling this dude out who's the leader of it because me and him were on a panel together about mental health awareness. Oh, no shit. I'm like, how are you going to be on a panel about mental health awareness and then fuck up somebody else's mental health? Mm-hmm. Like, you're a hypocritic fuck, like, and I don't fuck with people like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I hate people like that, to be honest with you. Bullies. And I was like, if you guys don't stop this shit, like, the un- unthinkable is going to happen. You guys are going to have blood on your fucking hands. So, as a high mind, they didn't want it out there that he was a fucking scumbag, so they mass reported my account. TikTok didn't give me any chance to fucking... Yeah. And the worst part about it was, I already knew I was on thin ice because I had a couple companies that wanted me to do work with them. And they sent me all the stuff, and I started making videos for them. And like clockwork a week later, they hit me back up and be like, hey, we're going to pull the brand sponsorship. I was like, why? And they're like, we did some digging into your account. Do you realize how fucking shadow banned you are? Shadow banned? Yeah, yeah, shadow banned's weird. Yeah. It's basically like when, um, basically if you, like, have like a little guideline, you know, like violate, not violation, but like a little strike, if you, like, you know, said something, that they'll, they'll, uh, basically give you, like, a little warning, and then they'll shadow ban you, basically only viewing your, uh, videos to people that follow you. Right. Trust me, I, I had that multiple times, so and that was algorithm. so frustrating. They basically make the algorithm. Yeah. yeah. So, it's crazy too because at that time, everybody was like, oh, I'm shadow banned on social media. No, I had companies reach out to me and tell me I was fucking shadow banned. So I was like, I'm doing something right. All right? So, uh, of course, the video I make saying this is dude is super fucking viral. They all get together, match report my account. Literally, three days later, one of the people they dogs ended up killing themselves because of that. All their accounts are still up on TikTok. I think I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mel? I think so. Yeah. All of their accounts are still up on TikTok. I can't get a fucking answer back to save my dick. So I was done with TikTok for a little bit and I just recently got back on it because I wanted to... Hey, so you, saw, you got me into account? I don't know you did. Yeah. It's the grizzly melon ledge, just because I. Oh, you follow yeah. me. That's right. I, I have a, I have, I have like a burner one where I, it's, I barely post on it, and for some reason I have like 500 followers and I barely post on it for some reason. I'm just like, why? But the <laughs> thing about it is, I knew naming it the grizzly melon ledge was gonna chap asses, and here's how I know it chaps asses because now you can see who views your profile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's always just the same fucking high amount of people. Not, if you get about, it, it depends on how many followers you have. Because I remember when my first account got banned, I made a new one. And then I had about, I was getting close to the number of followers I had before my first account got banned. They stopped doing that once you reach a certain lim- limit of followers. I think it's I think it's like maybe 10,000, they'll stop it. Because people are always constantly looking at your profile. Especially if you have a video that's on the For You page for like weeks and whatnot. Yeah, the, um, I, I think I told you how I got banned, right? For the first time? I really did. Yeah, well, okay, so I had a couple of videos. Well, obviously, people thought it was like Mr. B, so that was one of them. That that helped my account. Yeah, Bobby Beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bobby Beast. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Beast. It was Bobby Beast originally. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we talked about this. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that, and I'll just make my own kind of videos. And I, I would make, like, really fucked up videos. I remember w- w- one of them was really funny. I remember I pretended I got bit by a rattlesnake on my penis, and Miranda was my sister. I'm like, sis, you got to suck the venom out. you got to suck the venom out. And TikTok's like, absolutely not. <laughs> so, yeah, but, no, yeah and uh, we had made a couple. Uh, one of them. Um, Prager U uh, commented, and they, they were not happy about it. It was Dennis Prager. You know that fucking idiot. Fuck, first, oh, not to go off side, yeah. fuck Dennis Prager. He just yeah. on a fucking podcast. He goes, <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with anime porn depicting underage <laughs> women because it's not <laughs> real and it's an outlet, so they don't. Make, fuck you. Yeah, that's fuck pedophilia. That you guy. fucking old it's decrepit also, fuck. It's also oh, bestiality because yeah. there's there's an article I read recently where all modern anime characters are based on kittens. The way that they're anatomically drawn is based on cats. I'm taking a picture, by the way, Manny. There we go. Yeah, well, you know. So, they also want to fuck cats. <laughs> Listen. And from that one documentary I saw on Netflix, you don't fuck with cats. Yeah, you don't fuck with no, cats. No, no, no. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so Dennis Brinker, uh, it was I stitched this. It was He was like, tell me you're conservative. 
without telling me you're conservative. So I stitched it. I go to Miranda. I'm like, I love you, sis. And she's like, I love you too, bro. We start making out. We put sweet home Alabama. <laughs> dude, that shit went everywhere, dude. Yeah, after all, because the, like, the LGBTQ community were like, yeah, take that. And I'm like, I don't like you guys either. Yeah. Like, like, I, 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 don't, I like you. They're cool. But I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. I, I don't like any of you guys. I, I really like yeah. I really like LGBT until they became their own subscription platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, the LGs and B's were cooler than the T's. I mean, I have a lot of T friends, don't get me wrong, but a lot of, like, just most of them are... They just bitch too much. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they bitch a lot. Look, I'm just naturally low T, so... <laughs> <laughs> I just stay away from all of them. But, so, so how I got um, banned... Well, I know, well, another reason, because I know that... It wasn't because you were banging your sister on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure nothing like it. It's too funny to do. So, well, I had, hey, you probably saw this one. I think we talked about it. I, had, I made a video, basically. This is after, like, the whole George Floyd shit that happened. And I made a video... And, oh, 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 this is, oh, this didn't get me banned at all. This, this actually got me... Well, a lot of people were kind of angry for... <laughs> Obvious smaller reasons. Smaller reasons, but it's basically... I went on, like, a, like a, like a one-minute rant saying, this is how black people drink Gatorade how white people drink Gatorade. It's everyone drinking Gatorade the same fucking way. And I'm like, hey, look, it doesn't matter. We're all the same fucking people, you know? And it doesn't matter on a race, blood, whatever. Okay. It's so it's innocent. It, yeah, it's innocent. And then people were like, Factual. that's Powerade. And I'm like, motherfucker, it's Gatorade, okay? Oh but my God, really? That's what they, 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 were, they, were, they were really like, this. you're drinking Powerade. And then I had a... And then I, I had a couple of, uh, you know, a, a lot a lot of black TikTokers were, were, were really cool about it. I had some that were like, well, you have real press? And I'm like, I was told I was fat, too fat to fuck at times. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I was in high school, I mean, like, it, I've been, I've served to, technically, yeah, I've been mm -hmm. I, I, I've been told by, like, girls I'm disgusting. I've been told by, you know, the people that I'm a piece of shit. So technically, I've been oppressed, you know. And, I mean, it doesn't matter I'm calling my skin or whatever, but, I mean, I've been, I mean, I'm, am I worried about it? Yes! This kid, but, uh. That was a little too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I had a weird kind of impression where it was. Yeah. So I, you know, I grew up in a Cuban family. Yes. Yeah. And you know. So you had a family, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had a family. I don't want to hear anything you have here's to say. The now. Thing, here's the thing about Spanish people: <laughs> we have no choice but to have family. Yeah. We have yeah. so much of them. Yeah. We I have, have too many family. I have a Cuban family yeah. that just moved onto my street. Nice. And I'm trying to learn Spanish so I can go make friends with them because they have banging Dumb. parties every fucking weekend. Dumb. See? And the food smells amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's mainly beer. So, like, <laughs> in, a, in a weird spot where it's like I wasn't white enough for my white friends, but I also wasn't brown enough for my Spanish friends. Yeah. Because when I moved to, to in Miami, nobody cared. Nobody gave a shit. It wasn't a thing. Yeah. In Tampa, it was different because I had that accent when I first moved here. Like, a lot of people were like, oh my god, your English is so good. How long have you been here? I'm like, bitch, I was born here. Like, I had no idea uh, I sounded yeah, that yeah. Spanish. Oh, dude, so I wasn't Spanish white enough. Many. Yeah, I wasn't white enough for my white friends. And then eventually, you know, I started getting my accent a little better. Yeah. I wasn't fucking brown enough for my brown friends. Yeah. So it was just weird, dude. Like, I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. So all the black people adopted me at that point. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I knew a lot of I knew some white people that were from uh, Miami. They were raised in Miami, and then they uh, said they would leave to go to another city, and they would have the Miami accent and stuff. Yeah. And they were just white kids because they grew up with all yeah. Cuban kids, it's Cuban, a Cuban, Cuban kids. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like, that's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, so back to being banned on TikTok. Yes. So yes. yes. Okay, ADHD, everybody. Um, <laughs> so. Black. So the summer, I think it was 2021, I think, yeah, it's 2021, but yeah, but right before I moved down here, uh, Lil Nas X, I just made the video of him in the shower with all those naked black guys, and... Uh -huh. Oh, Jack Harlow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so then I pretend Bang. I'm going to prison, I have the music in the background, I'm, I'm, I am I got a towel on, and I'm like, it's, a, it's like when, you, when it's your first time in prison, you're about to join the showers, I look over... And then it's like, I told you long ago, and all these black guys dance, and then I go like this, I get the soap, drop it, and then I get fucking banned. <laughs> this, no. I actually saw that video before it got banned. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the first that's time banned. I saw that music video. I didn't know nothing about it. And the first time I ever see it, it's him pretending to drop the soap in prison so it gets butt fucked. And that's what gets him banned. And I was like, Dude, That's what got you banned. I literally had a video. That's great. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's I still great. have it. Yeah, I, uh, there was this one video. <laughs> What, what was that one sound on TikTok? And it ends with the woman yelling, the fuck you are! Oh, uh, shit. But I, I, it was that uh, silhouette challenge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, a vi silhouette challenge. I had a yeah. video where I was pretending, and this is how fucked TikTok is. Mm -hmm. 
I had a video pretending like I was going to do the silhouette challenge, and all of a sudden you're the fuck you are. <laughs> and I don't know how we came across this. I don't know why the fuck we have it. Mm. We did. I, I, Kelly didn't buy it. She claims I didn't buy it. We have a pop, a lollipop that is the shape of the biggest cock I've ever seen in my life. It's probably like this fucking big and it's rainbow. Good lord. And when it goes, the fuck you are, she's off screen, but she's coming in with it, hitting me in the fucking face with it. <laughs> and it sucked for two reasons. Number one, I was in a weird spot in my life where I was trying to intentionally get banned from TikTok. Because I just had, there's a certain fan that I reached on TikTok where it was like really disturbing my personal life. That yeah, I I've had a lot of this too, man. And okay. I, I can't relate. Yeah, so, no, <laughs> it's crazy. So, basically, what you see me do on stage mm -hmm. was me on TikTok. Yeah. Like, I was the dude shotgunning beers, telling fucked up stories, mm -hmm. going live at 3 o'clock in the morning, drunk as fuck in my kitchen, having. Mm -hmm. <laughs> emo cowboy dance parties <laughs> like so like when we go out in public people would recognize me Interesting. they want me to be that guy yeah so okay i'm going to bars and just getting fucking sloshed for free because everybody wants to shotgun a beer with me everyone wants to do a shot with me and like you know for my videos like you think like i'm not going to look like that in public but i do pit viper sunglasses sleeveless shirts don't give a fuck America. Who I am on TikTok is who I was in real life. And this is a part of the reason why I said I'm going to marry Kelly one day. Because she's always been really good with letting the grizzly villain do his thing. Yeah. But knowing when she needs to reel it in. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's usually why I hear Anthony Michael Rowe. And I hear the middle name and I know I'm fucked. And I will sober up super fucking quick. But I didn't get any bans, no points, no warnings, no suspensions. And I had a giant rainbow cock hit me in the face. And you get banned for dropping the soap in a video where there's no nudity. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, all, it's all blurred out too, which is even funnier. And then, so then I was just like, all right, fuck TikTok, I'm done with it for a while. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go for it again. So then I, I just went on and I just started grinding, and I and my my account was fucking getting back. I had I got to 100k in like six days, and I'm Holy like, shit. I'm like, shit, man, we're fucking back, baby. And I was doing like live streams again. It was, it was a good time. And then all of a sudden, I I get banned again. They, they, they must have fucking found out. I was like, oh, he's just got this motherfucker's back. And, and I didn't go by Bobby Beast. I went by Scotty G on it, too. And I was just like, yeah, this huh. is this is not good. And, um, yep. TikTok doesn't like me. I try to post videos and it tells me it goes against community standards. What do you like? What do you like? Do you like really close pictures of your butt? I fucking stand up. Oh, you stand up? I stand up. Clips. Yeah. I have to put on Facebook and they're fine. But then Facebook won't even let me monetize because on April 20th of all days, I shared a post and I put Happy Weed Day. And I got knocked down because I was sharing a post from work and it was a sale we were having that day. Nobody else got in trouble, but I did because I put the word weed with a sale. And I still can't monetize any of my reels to this day. I think the be the best place to best places to post stand up, Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. I'm on Instagram. Insta on. Instagram is, is very cool. I've had they, 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 13 followers on like Instagram. There you go. Whatever. I, I just post it because yeah. it cross posts between. Yeah, Facebook. I break down. Exactly. I break down my sets and I'll take like one of the bits that hits the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what you do. It's and I'll make it a reel. Yeah, just make it a reel. My and reels within like two days are doing over like a K. Like, like, yeah, it's crazy how yeah. it just quick it happens. Oh, fuck it. And especially if you if you have like a good quality camera, yeah, the, the, the Instagram al algorithm will fucking feed that more because like, if they see like a, like a phone that's like filmed, like a, like a, like a the set's filmed like on, a, on like a potato or something like that, they're not, they're not going to share it around. But yeah, if you have like a good quality phone, like a good iPhone or even like a good camcorder, yeah, they'll be like, all right, here, I'll show this to more people. If it's if it's good, yeah, let's fucking do it. So interesting. Yeah, man. And uh, I'm just trying to get that, like y'all. I just want over one k. Fuck. It's easy. It's <laughs> easy, man. And, that, and the other thing too is like, well, it is and it is. Well, it's, Instagram's I'm not pretty even hard. About it, honestly. I mean, Instagram's pretty hard. Uh, I have like, I posted some old TikToks on there that got like, what the man? Massive, but it was the one of me, my buddy grabbing my penis. You saw that. Where it's like, it, it was the trend where it's like, uh, surprise your roommate naked 
which we, I was naked, of course. And I, and I told, yeah, this is when COVID just began. We were like just hanging out, and I said, Jan, it'd be really funny. We should fucking do do that, do those videos. It's like surprising your your friend naked or girlfriend naked. But you should do it where you should get excited. You just grab my wiener. And Jan's like, okay, I'll do it. And so then I do it, and then he fucking first take he nails it. He was like, penis, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Dude, I, at the moment, I, the moment I put it on TikTok, it got like a million Who views. Was that? My, my best friend, Janet. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it got fucking like a million <laughs> views within like an hour on TikTok. Oh, it, fuck, and it, 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 people started fucking uh, stealing it and posting on their accounts and stuff. Yeah, because J- Jan to this day will fucking send me, you know, uh, videos of uh, of our video on other people's accounts that with millions of fucking yeah. views on them too. Oh, and I'm like, holy shit! Fox, like, holy yeah. And then we did another one here when we, I just moved in here. And that got about 10 million on fucking Instagram as well. And, he, and I told him, hey, it'd be funnier. You should do a surprise fake. Like, was, <gasps> and then <laughs> and they grab it. And then it was a, it was a good one. So it's, Instagram's pretty cool. You just got to fucking, it's got to post a banger. So my, mm-hmm. my issue with the whole TikTok thing now, like everybody else who's way too old to be on that fucking app, mm-hmm. I started during lockdowns. Yep. And it was a good outlet for me. And the first video that popped off, and I should have known about this thing in my fucking lame deal, was I was defending a veteran. <laughs> this is going to be a lot. I was defending a veteran who was bisexual, deaf, and had AIDS. Jeez. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I, I stood up for him. We exchanged phone numbers. We became friends. And then all of a sudden, he like, went crazy and like started making videos taking shots of me and shit. Oh man. It, it was wild. Oh he, he like RPK'd you with fucking YMH. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was fucking it was wild. Mm-hmm. But uh so that was the first video that popped off. I should have stayed on the fucking, you know, trying to like trying to help people. But making fun of the shit that was going on in the world at the time was just way too fucking easy. Like telling you for it. Yeah. I, and it's fun. Yeah. It's fun it's to make fun of shit. It really is. But there was one video in particular that pissed me off, and I knew I had to fucking stitch it. Mm-hmm. Remember heading into the 2020 election, Lady Gaga released that video? Mm-hmm. Hey, America, I'm running for a real American, so I'm voting Joe Biden. And she's wearing fucking camouflage, head to toe, standing from a jacked up fucking truck. Yeah. And she tries to chug an IPA, and like she's a badass, and like goes empty it out like she did the whole thing, but it was literally like half the beer was just fucking. So I stitched it. And I bought this hat just to make this video because I knew it would piss people off. I bought a MAGA hat. I was wearing a shirt that said, kill all pedophiles. Because there was that rumor going around because Lady Gaga was hanging out with Maria Abramovic. And if you know any Mm -hmm. of that story, it's wild. There's something weird going on with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my backyard and I literally just chug an entire bottle of beer in like three seconds and do this. Video was fine. And then all of a sudden, like out of the blue, it gets like fucking reported like crazy. Because like you start like getting like, hey, just like you know, this video has been reported X amount of times. So okay. we're gonna hide it, is what they were doing originally. So I was the subject of a sore topic for Lady Gaga fans to call themselves little monsters. And these little cunts are monsters. Like they tried to do this on like every one of my videos on my account, it was wild. But, yeah, I, I should have stayed in my lane. <laughs> That's still fucking hilarious, though. Oh, yeah. Kill all pedophiles, chug his beer. I, um... The only MAGA hat I ever wanted to get was one that said, Mexicans always get across. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any creators that you wanted them to, like, hate you at all? Like, big creators on, on the app? It's going to sound so fucking petty. It's because it is. It is. <laughs> I have a very one-sided beef with Uncle Laser. No shit. I have heard you talk about yeah, this. Yeah, dude, dude, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, don't, I find Uncle Laser not funny. He, but he, he's a character. I don't know enough. He's... <sighs> My buddy David Truitt, David, if you see this, fuck yourself, I still love you. Mm-hmm. Sends me the bit that he does about looking like a lunch lady and fucking single moms. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, lasers? Yeah. yeah. I've seen that. And he goes... Man, you guys are like very similar. Yeah, but you're funny. I was like, well, that's kind of insulting. But like, the reason why it's very one-sided is because like at my height on TikTok, we followed each other. 
Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, with every other fucking creator on the app, with the exception of, like, you know, conservative man, still one of my best friends to this day. We talk all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we fucking, you get to a certain level, and then people are just like, oh, well, he ain't on the same trajectory. I need mm -hmm. to free up some of the people I'm following that way. It looks better for sponsors and shit, and then they just fucking get you out of their life. Mm -hmm. The reason why I have a very one-sided beef with Uncle Laser is because at some point he unfollowed me. No big deal. I get it. Mm -hmm. But now he's just living the life that I want to fucking live. Like oh, so you're just jealous. I'm just jealous. He's you're always on jealous. my fucking favorite podcast. <laughs> Kill he, he's no uh, Dragon uh, Bros. Yeah, okay, Dragon okay. Bros. Yeah, and he, well, he has his own now too. Yeah. And he's always fucking. He's touring right now, and like you said, he's not. Funny. I don't think he's funny. He's not. So like, I don't know. I haven't seen him enough to even understand or have an opinion about him. Okay, but there's always the concept of you knowing the right people at the right time. The, I think about oh, me I'm with sorry. more of a southern accent and mullet. It's it's basically. It's, <laughs> I know what he looks like. Yeah. No, I just mean like material. Okay, he's, okay, okay. You, you know what it is? He's like okay. he's like Larry the Cable Guy, and if Theo Vaughn got really unfunny, and they had a baby. All I saw that, from that, Uncle Laser. I think that's it. All right I there, see yeah. from Uncle Laser is a video where he bombed that killed Tony and got mad. Yeah, he, yeah, he um, does that all the time. Well, he, bom he, he bombed that Kill Tony and, 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 and Roseanne Barr one time. I watched it. I think this is maybe like one of the first, second times I ever saw him. Roseanne fucking was like, that's not you, you fucking idiot. Like, like, come on. Like, I know you got some jokes in there. Instead of getting up there and talking about fucking girls in the butthole and stuff, like, you got some, you got material. And, and he, I think that kind of fucking got to him. And he, because, really? and, huh. and then the next time he went on, he, he was like, because I think Tony was like, what happened to you, Uncle Laser? And, and Uncle Laser was like, Oh, how's it feel that my my podcast got more views than your shit on Instagram? Ah! And, and Tony's like, okay, I could fucking make you unemployed right now if you yeah. continue this shit, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, you gotta, you gotta watch out, laser. Yeah. I, I like to me. I, I just, just don't. I don't like cocky. I hate no, that shit. I, hate I like that confident shit. kid. Yes. Confident is different than being cocky. Yes, and then. And did you see the one when him and Hans Kim went out? I, th I think they were trying to fight for the regular spot. Yeah. Hans destroyed him. Hans is and he's Hans it. That yeah, Hans, yeah. Hans, Hans is, Hans is so amazing, funny. dude. Hans is so great. Yeah. He comes to Tampa all the time. They and, just uh, added a show for March at Side Splitter. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, as of like two days ago, they just added it. Yeah, we should go to that. Yeah, we should. We should. We should. Shout out to Side Splitter. Yeah. What's up, me and Manny are in the Florida man Hey. I'm so jealous. I wish I got on the couch. I'm actually going to be there tonight for the open mic. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yeah. Nice. I am. Um, I kind of had a dickhead moment when I got added onto the Florida Man competition. <laughs> Go on. So, Go on. I tried to get on the Florida Man competition. I said, my fucking resume. I don't know how long I've been doing it. I sent a bunch of bits. Yeah. Never fucking heard back from it. Actually, the email I got back, I think, was something like, I'm sorry, but we made our selections for the tournament or whatever. And I was like, all right, no hard feelings, no big deal, whatever. First time doing the open mic at Side Splitters. Get off stage. Fucking kill it. Nice. One of the best sets. Yeah, I watched your set. I even shared it on YouTube as well, too. So I told, I told, I told, I told yeah, my people to really go really watch it. Good. So I jump off stage. And the first thing I do when I get off stage, I don't know if you've ever been addicted to drugs, but when you just get high, mm -hmm. you really want a cigarette. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol. Yeah, of course. I, I always wanted a cigarette whenever I would drink a lot. That's know. my thing. Like I jump off on off stage, I have to go smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Mostly too because I'm a fucking whore, <laughs> and I thrive off the attention. Mm -hmm. And I know if people see me outside in a vulnerable spot, like just smoking a cigarette, people come Don't up and tell me how you. fucking funny I am. And I need that to pet my. Ear. Uh, so I'm attention whore. Get it. I'm getting ready to leave. We're comics. We're attention whores. I'm getting ready to leave. The Leave the big room because that's what we were doing at that time. Oh, I was out of the big room for, for that one, like I did the other day. And we leave, and as I'm getting ready to go out the door, Sean's doing the audio. Nice. Yeah. Trying to get a shout out, homie, love you. Love you, Sean. He was just on the other day. And he uh, goes, Hey, uh, my boss wants to talk to you in the lobby. And I'm like, Oh, shit. Was it like a. Because I noticed, like, not too many comedians who went before me said anything that was like kind of like push the envelope right right but it's you yeah because like terry does i always fuck up his last name oh terry gillespie was there terry gillespie told me like the third time he saw me do stand up he goes nobody touches the third rail anymore touch the fucking third rail don't be a pussy and i was like third rail 
Don't be afraid to like push the envelope. Okay. Yeah, like. Yeah. And like the magazine jokes. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, but that, yeah, that's wild. You know, that's that talk that BT does with people. Like, yeah. Well, so I didn't notice because I've never met BT. Right. Right. So I go in the lobby, and he's. You remember the Christmas vacation? Yeah. And Chevy Chase is looking how proud he is at Christmas old. lights. Yeah. I can't stand it, but yes. Yes, I can't stand him either. BT standing in the lobby, arms folded, just staring at the floor of my competition bracket. Just like the proudest dad you've ever seen. In life. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, You're Anthony. I was like, Yep, he goes. He's giving me this spiel about the Florida Man competition, and I'm trying to pay attention to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But I am so chock full of adrenaline because I literally just got the fuck off stage. Plus, I'm now realizing how much I actually drank before I went on stage, so I'm tipsy as shit. <laughs> and I have to piss so badly, my eyes are starting to turn yellow. <laughs> That's so, just the job is. I, 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 <laughs> I'm checking in and out of what he's saying because, like, sensory overload. Yeah. And then he goes, I think you would do really great in this competition. Would you like to be in it? Yeah. And I was like, well, I did already apply for it before you guys rejected me. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was fucked up. But I'm on the floor man competition. And then he ended up being like, the crazy thing is, is when you go into like place like Side Splitters, like these people are like professionals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like top of the top. And they couldn't be more of the nicest fucking people on the face of the planet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. wild. And BT thing, like gave me like weird vibes the first time. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I met him because it's like. But then once you talk to he's him, not, he, he's not. Like, he's not like. I don't want. I don't want to he's, stop he's, he's, he's not a, loose or silly like us. Yeah. The, he's very very professional. Yeah. Very he's, he's, yeah. He runs one of the best so clubs yeah. in the country. Man. So, like, exactly. Yeah, so you, when he talks to you, it's like it's a little bit intimidating at yeah, first. But then once you get past that, you're like. There's nothing intimidating about this. I, I'm just being weird again. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I was scared. Like I was like, yeah. Oh man, I'm never gonna yeah. be allowed on stage again because I did tell the fucking magazine dude. Oh, dude, I've seen much worse things. And I, there. Oh, yeah. they still and, come back. But I was just like, oh man, I'm in trouble. For no man, if you if you go there and like if you like you like I said you do the open mic or whatever the fuck, keep coming back and like if you're like genuinely if you're there not to fuck around like the regulars there that go there and you know that they work the club there they'll respect you BT will respect you too man and I think I think that's any place really because I mean like there's a lot of places that you know a lot of open micers will go and just I don't know just dick around and like not really take yeah, shit but, you know, but they'll call themselves comics but it's also just like yeah, man, you know, sometimes there are people who do take this shit very seriously, especially even though Mike's as well, too. They want to, you know, fucking get good. They want to keep on trying to work on, you yeah. know, better stage presence, better fucking, you know, facial features. But yeah, man, that's basically what it is right there, man. Ever since I started, <laughs> yeah, ever since I started doing this, I realized, like, holy fuck, this is, I don't want to do anything else. Yeah, yeah. Man. Like, if I could just do comedy for the rest of my life, I would be very, very oh, happy. Yeah. And when I first started going to side splitters, like, I had no idea you had to sign up, and then it was like a two month wait. Yeah. I was ordinary about that. I was I was a little upset at first, but then I realized like, okay, this is gonna they weed out. Is so many. This is gonna weed out all the people who are just trying to sign up spur of the moment, and they take up the spots from people who actually want them. Yep. You know what I mean? So the funny thing is, going to side splitters the first like month, two months, trying to make friends and nobody giving a fuck about you. It's like, what the fuck? Like, dude, I'm not an asshole. I'm trying to be nice, but I was trying way too hard. So I just fucking stopped caring, just went, did my things. shit, just hung out, and then the people started approaching me, yep. being super nice to me after. Like, I mean, at first it was like, you know, Sean. Sean's always been super nice to me since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Sean Gast, fucking love that guy, Corey Hillier. Mm -hmm. Love him. He's always super, super nice to me. Even, um, uh, JJ Curry. JJ Curry. JJ has always been a sweetheart. First dude that ever talked to me at Side Splitters and gave me the time of day and gave me advice, and I just was like, I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's a professional. Man. Yeah. And, and David Wayne too. Love yeah. that guy. Bless his heart. It's so, so nice. crazy because like, since we're gonna sit here sucking on comics dicks, like. Oh yes. If we're gonna suck a dick. It better be funny. My my, my first set <laughs> like the, the, the features <laughs> on that set were Joe Murray and uh, L.J. Brown. And then the dude that looked like the teddy bear that you scribbled on as a kid. Teddy Ruxpin? Are you talking about the uh, the feature the feature for the uh, for your new show that's coming up? No, no, no. He was a feature on the first set I ever did. Oh, at Ordnance One? Yeah. Oh. I thought Manny did that show with you. No. 
first set, I do my first time on stage. Oh, oh the first time on stage. Wait, draw, draw in. Teddy Bear. Was it, wait, was it Joe? Because I think I was there for your second time. Yeah. No, it's this dude wearing a leather jacket and tattoos all over his fucking face. Oh, you, Malachi. 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 Yes. Yeah, El Ellen DeGeneres is on Percocets. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Malachi. So, He's funny. I go up, I do my two nervous fucking minutes, jump off stage. LJ Brock and Joe come up to me and I'm like, all right, you did good here, you failed here. Two hardest times to do comedy, first time you eat a bag of dicks, and jumping on stage after you ate a bag of dicks. So the best advice I ever got. Yeah, yeah. And then, like from then, you got guys like you two set me in the right direction. Like literally, two of my best friends I've made since being in comedy, Scotty Bird. Any advice that dude fucking gives you, you listen. fucking listen to it. You fucking listen. And it's just crazy how, for the most part, our stand-up community that we have here in Tampa is one of the most helpful, yeah, supportive, supportive. But at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Clicky. Yeah. Clicky as a motherfucker. Like, it's Clicky. high school. <laughs> it's. Yeah, guys, I did not miss that part of high school, yeah. but I also. I feel like I love this because of the fact that I'm getting to literally go back to high school and redo it Basically, all over again. Yeah. With hindsight. Like, okay, I'm not going to fuck up the way I did this way. I'm not fucking this up. I'm just going to stay on, you know, outside of yeah. the game. Oh, yeah. Because when it comes to the clicks, you know, because you got. Yeah. Because you got the St. P clicks, you know, down there. Then you got the Dunedin uh, clicks, you know, the yeah. Dunedin Real, the people who go there. Then you got the Ebor click. The Ebor click. Yeah. Then you got the Side Splitters clicks. Then you even got the Pasco, you know, like, like North 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 Pinellas Pasco. Uh, well, let's be honest. You know? We've got all these clicks, and then Side Splitters is like the melting pot. Of all yeah. Side Splitters is like the melting pot. It's a melting right? pot. Because yeah, everyone everyone goes. Yeah. So yeah, from from every little spot, as you'll get like you know like people like. Trakel, who's a St. Pete guy, mm -hmm. go all the way up to yeah, to, to size splitters because he's a really hilarious and B, yeah, he fucking you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. When I first started off, I was only thinking about just going to size splitters and doing that only because Good. I just didn't fucking know anything mm -hmm. else. I didn't know there were other open mics. Oh yeah, Dylan yeah. Walker. Dylan Walker pushed me. Shout out to that guy too. Shout out to Dylan Walker for giving me the best what one of the best pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. One of them was Crunch, uh, Michael Crunch Carvalho. Crunch, he yeah. told me write what you like. Keep what they like. Yep. I've never forgotten that. I love that. Dylan Walker, go to a minimum three open mics a week. Yep. Use those as the gym. Come to side splitters as the gun show. Yep. You never practice at side splitters. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, and that so at bad. first felt like a daunting task because I'm like, man, I'm a three year old. I don't want to be living in the house all the time. All these open mics start before she goes to bed. And then, you know, you do some digging and you're like, yeah. I have no excuse. <laughs> There's so many open mics I can get to on my schedule. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little tough, especially when you are a parent and, you know, obviously you have a life that's outside of comedy. Uh, but, you know, because I, I do praise a lot of the guys who are young, like they're, like maybe Dude, either seriously, just in the college, college and all they do, yeah, they just want to do fucking, yeah, just go do four to five open mics a night, which is great. I think it's fantastic. Like I mean, Corey. I wish, yeah, huh? Corey. Corey was like, yeah. That guy Corey grinds and, like a motherfucker. Corey and Jeff Waite are yep. the two. Yeah. Motherfuckers, I know that go to the most open mics. Yeah, yeah Jeff Wade, Jeff he's, he's has, gonna be killing Jeff's it. Jeff's gonna look like. Sure, man. At one point, I think that motherfucker went to like 13 open mics in one week. Jeff's gonna. One well, weekend, yeah. Really good. Insane, yeah. dude. It was, and then, yeah, he like. I was following he his did Instagram like seven of them in a weekend, yeah. and then the other ones were during the week. He just. The, the fact that that guy is just pushing as hard as he is, I, I, dude, I can't ignore that. I can't. I have so much love for Jeff. I could not do what <laughs> Jeff did, and I found that out the hard way. Last month, I had six shows in a week. Ooh. And by the time Sunday rolled around, I gave my worst fucking performance I've ever given in my life. I was so fucking drained, I was getting sick because after my show Saturday night, which was in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. I partied way too fucking hard. <laughs> And I just felt like dog shit. Mm -hmm. And I found out there was a Bucky's on the way there. It was my first time going to Bucky's. <laughs> nice. So I think we bought like fucking one of everything to eat on the way. <laughs> I think I saw you post about that. To yeah. the next show. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know what the fuck they put in those cheesesteak fucking burritos they have there. But that shit's like fucking crap. Whole pork sandwiches. They, yeah. they free based on oh. it. Oh, it <laughs> it's addicting. You want another the second you're fucking done with it. Fuck it's the modern Coca-Cola recipe. So, <laughs> I'm fucking stuffed to the gills on fucking Boosies, as I like to call it now. Boosies. What? 
was that? Like Bussy? Bussy? Yeah. Bussy. Like a bus, a bussy? A, a, boy, a boy pussy? Boy pussy? Butt pussy? Oh, wow, I'm ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, speak to not know what the fuck that is. <laughs> it's the Spanish in you. You're good. <laughs> See, we just call that burrito. <laughs> so, <laughs> hit the SAP button on that motherfucker. <laughs> See? I ate so much food for fucking Bucky's, and I was so fucking tired yeah. right now from doing comedy all week and driving everywhere and all that shit. By the time I got to the show Sunday, I, I was only doing like five minutes. And I went up on stage and I was just like, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I am so good. I am tired. I am stuffed to the bridges, to the gills. I literally drank alcohol every fucking night that week. <laughs> good lord, man. I, that was the first time I ever went on stage sober. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, this ain't gonna be good. Yeah. I'm just so low energy from being We're here. such polar opposites, man. You're over there with your dip. I got my vape. You, you, you drink so much alcohol. I just smoke weed. But we're so much the same, too. It yeah. fucking blows my mind. Yeah, we're just, yeah. when it comes to our vices, we're completely polar We're yin and yang. I mean, we're completely different, but we still opposites. fit together. <laughs> I'm the big circle that yeah, fits he, all you guys there. <laughs> He's the big circle that goes around us. Here. The big circle. <laughs> But yeah. also, then I'd be remiss if we didn't shout out Jacoby Burton. Jacoby, Dan, Jacoby, guy, Gordon Dixon, Gordon. Jacoby's gonna be recording specials. Gordon, 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 Gordon's been on the podcast too. Devin Pickett, shout out to that guy. He's been on as well. Yeah, shout I'm out. I'm so to proud of Jacoby. Man. Absolutely. It's finally, it's finally fun. that special is gonna be so awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm so excited for that. I, yeah. How I never. When is this the first time I ever seen Dubsy General? Really? Okay. Really? Dude, his that was the first fucking time I met him, bit about the Confederate flag had me laughing so hard I thought <laughs> I'd pop my fucking rib out. <laughs> Dude, and the funny thing is because growing up in Pennsylvania, you wouldn't expect this, but there were so many fucking kids in my high school who had like the Confederate flags on their trucks. Yeah. Up north? Yeah, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, it's fucking wild. So dude. they're geologically retarded too. Basically. <laughs> they're geologically and historically retarded. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and that, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say because I don't talk other people's business, but I also socially can't yeah. fucking say it either. I, I, I'm, doing <laughs> couple, so good. I'm, doing, I'm doing a couple shows with him. Yeah, he's doing, I, I think he's like headlining like somewhere in Brooksville that, that Derek uh, is doing. And then um, I know uh, he all dubs also wanted me and Devin Pickett to go to, to uh, Fatfish Blues in Orlando nice. as well too. So I'm like, yeah, man, just fucking let me know. And also shout out to Jacob, Jacoby as well. I'll be with him and Coco on Ooh. September second. Yeah, on, on Saturday, September second for Labor Day. So oh, yeah. you guys are in the area, come down. Let's fucking go. It's at Bonkers Comedy Club in Coco, baby. Nice. Or pitching show for that weekend. <laughs> shout out to Taurus. And sh- shout out to Taurus as well. Yeah, Taurus, show Taurus, Taurus basically, he basically took me under his wing for sure. Uh, yeah, and, and Scott Burr was one of those guys. That's a tiny wing. It is a tiny wing. wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him, yeah, uh, Scott Burr, but Gordon, Gordon was another. <laughs> I can't. He was another guy that, that took me under his wing as well. So, Jay, shout out to all those motherfuckers. Johnny yeah, B no. as well. Yeah, all those guys. I, I get to meet Johnny B, but he's a great our guy. Our past will cross the bench. Oh, he, oh, he will. Yeah, he'll, 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 he'll like you. Um, but since we're shouting out shit for that weekend, uh, come see me September 1st, Cage Brewing. I will be opening up for Tanya Lee Davis Bar for Hell Unstoppable yeah. Me Tour. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, we, and we did that show about yeah. a month ago. Yep. Good show. It was just a week. It was weird because it was during the daytime. Hot, but it was fun. Still, my favorite picture of all time is you me holding, holding TLD and her just waving to everybody. <laughs> nah, she's a sweet lady. Yeah, she's such, 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 such a sweet lady. I haven't met her yet. Love her. That's well, such a great she's person. Such a, so funny, too, man. Oh, um, yeah, I see her stand up. Yeah, you, you got any shows she coming was, up? Um, um, yeah, um, yeah, I've got you the New Faces of the Comedy coming up yeah. uh, September oh, 9th. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. 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 all three yeah. of us are on that. That's why I wanted to shout out Taurus, yeah. giving us newbies. Oh my God, we're gonna get there. Chinese <laughs> chalk. Yeah. <laughs> giving us newbies a place where we can, you know, do our thing. Basically, it's gonna be a comedy competition at 1 p.m. Yeah. And then two. the winner is that two? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I thought the doors were in there. Uh, yeah, two o'clock. I think it's. I think doors open at one. 
And uh, show starts at 2 with This is my right plea. Way? Basically, fuck Scotty in Manny. I have sold literally zero tickets for this fucking thing. <laughs> sold like five or six. And so, I got five sold. Just I'm, buy one, one fucking seven. ticket from me. <laughs> He's buying it to the tourist flag, but you're either dead first or dead last. Thing, right? Right? Here's the thing, right? Last year it was the crowd voted. Yeah. But instead this year, because it's going to be over 200 people, yeah. people in attendance, there's going to be guest judges. There's going to be judges there. I, see, so I whoever was, wins the comedy competition will be opening for a national headliner yeah. at 8 p.m. That so night. this is where I can really This is where you. I love you guys. But I'm gonna fucking bury y'all. <laughs> I, I will never say this again because if it comes down to you and me in the finals of the four man competition, I am gonna make you my elote little bitch. But for this competition in particular, I'm also booked to do uh, the Pink Piano that night, Comedy Carnival out in Lakeland. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I, I want the stage time because attention to work. Yeah, but yeah I, mean, I would. I would. Not? It's a, I was sure if I was able to, I was, if I was able to do that show since I did it last year. Taurus was like, dude, if you've been doing it for less than three years, which I'm put, I'm clenching two right now, so he's like, fucking do it. I'm like, okay. So that means like, <laughs> and look, you know, I, I'm got, not. We've got yeah, time to. I'm not Ricky out. Bobby here. I mean, you're not first, your last bullshit. I got another two years after this to win the competition and exactly. rub your face on the carpet. Exactly. But I mean. I'm just happy to be there. <laughs> I'm just here for the stage time. You know that you know that one side splitters. I just, side splitters I just that, want to be low. You, you know how side splitters has those scenes that they open up with before mm-hmm. the show, and they always have that one with uh, fucking Forrest Gump where it's like, sir, Mr. President, Mr. President, it's like, I really have to pay. That's my energy. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, exactly. I don't care about winning anything. Well, yeah, we agree that that's like the worst person in fucking cinema history, Jenny. Fuck Jenny. Jenny. I, Jenna. Let's let's talk, let's, talk, let's talk about Jenny after the podcast because we've been going for like an hour and a half, and I have a lot of editing okay. to do with oh, the first shit. podcast and this one. Well, not the, really this one because we didn't say anything fucked up, but Sean and Corey were out of their minds. I don't know. I, I, felt like, I felt like the beginning of this podcast for like good ten minutes was solving the case. Okay, so like real quick <laughs> no, before but, we go. Okay, really. Am quick. I the only one who thinks that Sean Guest reminds you of like? A pedophile? Adam Sandler makes with Pete Davidson. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. It just all the best qualities of both of them. And here's the thing, and I, I mean this with all love and respect. Sean Guest is one of my favorite people. I know if I need anything. I, I adore him. I literally, I adore him. I love you. But the first time I met him. It's so off-putting with that fucking mustache and his style. <laughs> <talk>. <laughs> yes. No, I remember when I first met him too. He he came to to the Dunedin Brewery. I think that was the first time he ever did comedy. And I remember he was just so like lost. He and, and he was trying to introduce everybody. And, 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 and to everybody. Every he comes up to me, he's, he's like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Sean." I was like, "This oh, mustache." But I was like, "What's up, dude?" And he, he's he's like, "Yeah, like where do I go to sign up?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, just go inside. The point can put you last, but go ahead because that's Dunedin Brewery." So not the rip off Bert Kreischer. <laughs> But I have a secret time for you guys. Secret time. Secret time. On the pod, are you sure about the podcast? Oh yeah. Okay. There was it. a set that Sean did, an ordinance <laughs> one, where his bit was Caitlyn Jenner running for president. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody <laughs> understood yeah. the bit. Yeah. Nobody. I was fucking dying. Oh, I was, uh-huh. dude. I was dying. I turned back and realized that nobody I was with was laughing the way I was. I think the three of us were only laughing. So really. I told everybody that Sean was on mushrooms, <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody understood that. <laughs> I was like, Sean, my boy, this bit is so fun. You guys aren't giving it the respect it deserves. He's on mushrooms. <laughs> Try that in a small town. Try that in a small town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so yeah. oh. oh my god. All right. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm good. Thank, Thank you for having me. This is great.